So I'm in my home shop today, and I quickly wanted to go over aligning the z-axis. So for reference, binding will usually sound something like this. Now this means that something here in the lead screw travel from the stepper motor all the way to the bearing that seats the lead screw, there's something out of alignment. Now that could be your rollers, or that could be these top and bottom plates here. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So to begin, let's pretend we just put this machine together and we can't get it to move at all, meaning we can't home our axes. Now homing the axes is important as that kind of helps us get it in the position to do a uh, alignment using the actual stepper motor to run. Now if you can't get that motor to move, obviously that's going to be a problem. So we'll start from the point of manually having to get that axis right up to the home point. Now this machine uses a limit switch right at the bottom uh, of the X extrusion. That limit switch will tell the machine where it's located in space, meaning once we get the machine on, we want to get this plate here and to that limit switch so that we can go through the alignment process correctly. Now it's important to remember to never run your machine without homing it first as it won't know what the travel is. That, this is because there's only one limit switch and it uses a uh, calculated travel distance in the Stepcraft profile to tell it where the other end is, which is up here. Now, if we can't get this moving with software, there's a simple step that we have to go through uh, even if we can get it moving. So that step is just loosening the two M6 bolts at the top plate and the three M6 bolts under the spindle plate. Uh, that's pretty simple. You just need a number four matrix Allen key and we'll go ahead and loosen them. Now simply just loosen them enough so that you can rock this back and forth, this piece that holds the motor, the top plate here. We don't want up and down movement, we just want that back and forth. And now we'll do the same with the bottom plate. And I'm just backing them off enough so I can get that plate to wiggle. We don't want it moving up and down because that will change this height here. See how the lead screw doesn't sit all the way down against that bearing there? We want it so we can turn it by hand and it should be perfect, just like that. You see the wiggle there and the wiggle there. So from here, if we can't move it with the machine, we want to hit the e-stop at the front or unplug the machine. Doing so will cut the power to the stepper motors and allow us to move the axes by hand. Now, if you're experiencing a lot of binding, like you can't move it with your hand, there's most likely something wrong with your rollers. Either they're not tightened down firmly, or it's simply a matter of adjusting your roller tension. We have a, another video on adjusting your X and Z axis roller tension, which I highly recommend you check out if your axes can't move, or once you've completed the alignment on your Z axes and want to fine tune it. So from here, our goal is to get this plate to that limit switch. So now that we've moved this by hand up to the Z axis limit switch, and our top, our bottom and top plate are still loose, we can go ahead and go into UC CNC. Now I give power back to the motors by turning the e-stop clockwise and hit the flashing reset button in UC CNC. Now for you, this axis might be all the way back here. I've moved it forward for ease of access and to kind of give you a better idea of what this looks like up close. Now I'm gonna hit the home Z button. And as you can see, it bounced off that limit switch. Now this is the home position. If you're not able to get it to home at this point, even when it's right up against there, there's definitely gonna be something mechanical with your alignment, either a loose roller, a loose lead screw, um, or the possibly the motor coupler isn't fastened tightly enough. So definitely go through those and make sure that they're, they're nice and rigid if you can't travel that half or, or quarter inch up to the limit switch. Now from here, since this is where we want it, it's been homed, we can go in and just gently tighten up. I like to use the long end 
as this provides a little bit less torque um, and kind of just makes them snug as opposed to super tight. I start with the center bolt uh, and then move to the left and right ones. There's no more wobble in that bottom plate, just the top plate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna make sure our jog speed is at 10% and we're gonna wanna move the Z axis down. Now what we've done here is move the axes in a way that it allows first the bottom plate and then the top plate to sit where the lead screw wants them to. Because the main travel is from this bearing to the motor coupler. And we want that as straight as possible so that this axis moves smoothly and reliably every time. So now we have our Z axis at the end of its travel here. And I've gone ahead and snugged up these top bolts here. And I do the same thing, long end, just until I can't turn them anymore. Now, if our axis is aligned correctly, we should be able to hit the home Z button and it should go right back to that limit switch. If you hear any screeching or uh, a sort of um, metallic sound like something's rubbing, check your roller tension as well as the alignment of your top plate. Often, sometimes it can become tweaked in one direction and it will push against one of these rollers or the lead screw into the lead screw nut, and that can cause some sounds, but they're pretty easy to listen to. Uh, what you just heard is the sound of, of what I'd call a healthy axis. Um, there's no screeching or, or um, metal on metal sounds, and there's no binding. There's no mechanical binds there. So now that we can get it to home, let's go back and just snug up those bolts. So I use the short end now, and make sure they're nice and tight. And then I go back and snug up the top bolts as well. Now to be sure that your Z axis is in alignment, we can do a simple test. We can either go and change our jog feed percentage to 100, or we can simply hit shift and then the page down button. And that'll run our axes at 100% feed rate. And now I'm just going back and forth in a few places. So now that we're able to run our Z axis at 100% jog feed with no screeching, no binding, no extra noises, uh, we should be good to go. This should be a finely tuned, very rigid Z axis. And uh, this will create a much better end product with your projects as opposed to having loose gantries. For any further questions or help with any of these steps, please contact us at StepCraft Support.